So, we all know what a furry is, but do we actually know what a furry is? Is this really a furry? Or how about this? Is this a furry? Or is it not really a furry? Let's find out! Hello everybody, it's Tim Mr. Fox again, and I'm here with a brand new video made by yours truly. So, this video is very interesting because it's a thought that came across my mind recently. What really can be counted as a furry? I've seen people on Twitter, YouTube, any other form of social media, and even at con say that certain anthropomorphic characters count as furries, even though those characters themselves weren't made by furries. I really want to stress the fact that this is a community that expresses interest in anthropomorphic animals. And do not get me wrong, uh, you know, Nick Wilde is part of the fandom because he's an anthropomorphic character, but he himself isn't a furry. So Nick Wilde, as many of you know, was made by creators at Disney and he was made for the express purpose of being a character in a Disney movie. It's because of this that he wasn't really made to represent the fandom. He himself is just a character for a movie. Now look at this character, that is actually an original character but someone like Nick Wilde wouldn't be part of the furry fandom because he wasn't made by a sole individual meant to represent that individual for the express purpose of representing the fandom. In other words, Nick Wilde shouldn't be counted as a furry, but, you know, people still count him as a furry. But he does play a big part in this fandom. Let's go back thousands and thousands of years into the past and let's look at Egypt the Egyptian gods of ancient Egypt. Now, you could say that Anubis is a furry. I mean, he is daddy. The point is that these Egyptian gods are anthropomorphic, right? So they should be counted as furries because they're anthropomorphic. I wouldn't say characters, but they're anthropomorphic gods. But really, let's be honest here. The furry phantom did not exist in ancient Egypt. There were no records or nothing saying so, so anybody who comes across and says, oh yes, the furry phantom existed in ancient Egypt because they worshipped ancient anthropomorphic gods. That's not true at all, unfortunately. It emerged from the 1980s and 1990s as a general interest in anthropomorphic animals. But I'm getting myself carried away. The reason why an Egyptian god like Anubis or Horus wouldn't be counted as a furry is because they were created or they are gods, whichever you believe in. They are representing themselves as a form of deity and basically it's a part of a culture that is completely separate from the furry fandom. So you can't really say that Anubis and Horus are furries because they're really gods and I, I'd be damn surprised if Anubis came down from the heavens and told me he was a furry. Maybe he will someday, but I don't know. This is going to come as a surprise, but thousands of years ago, there were people who were already making anthropomorphic art. Now, this wasn't sexual or anything, of course, or maybe it was, I don't know. I didn't live in 30,000 BC, but these characters basically, like many other characters in ancient times, had a animal head and a human structure built onto them. And basically, this could be a sign that it's a deity from prehistory. Don't get me wrong, it could mean anything really. It could mean a time traveler who got stuck in 30,000 BC, didn't have anything to do, and he turned out to be a furry, and he made this so that people in the future would see and say, oh yes, the furry phantom existed in 30,000 BC. There you go, guys. It's proof. But it's not. Reason why, again, it was not created by a person to represent the individuality, to represent the personality, or to be an alter ego of themselves. It was simply made as a work of art. Simply made as part of the culture. So it can't really be meant to be part of the fandom if it's not one guy drawing commissioning art and then having somebody 
make the damn art for him. So it can't really fit into that spectrum. Final words, I mean, it, it really just depends because my personal views is that Nick Wilde or Mickey Mouse aren't furries, although they play a big part in the furry fandom. But what makes this very interesting is that it's all subjective. And quite honestly, this is my view on the matter. I don't believe Nick Wilde is a furry, I don't believe Mickey Mouse is a furry, but other people do. And that's completely fine. I'm not saying they're wrong. If they believe that these two characters are furries, then they're furries for them. It's all subjective in a very real sense, because these are anthropomorphic characters. And really in the furry fandom, we're all fans of anthropomorphic characters. And really that's what it's all about. So whatever you believe in, it's still anthropomorphic characters and it still plays a big part in our community. Well anyways guys, I'm going to end the video here. I will see you guys next time. Mwah.